We're now revisiting Governor Darling. There are two aspects of his policy that we'll look at which were important developments in his tenure. One was a treatment of convicts and the other about land regulation. I'm Michael Bieschel, Australian historical fiction writer, and we're, we're talking about the second governor to come to the colony after Lachlan Macquarie. This was Lieutenant General Ralph Darling. As highlighted in the first video, he was a courageous soldier, a firm disciplinarian, calm in all weathers, but by his actions, naive in the politics of colonial New South Wales. Especially in his dealings with MacArthur, Samuel Marsden, and our good old friend William Charles Wentworth. On the convict policy side, Darling's view was fair, but, but also black and white. He had made some improvements to the colony and had broken new ground in controversial areas which we talked about before. Now up to this point some convicts were used to work in the government service. Now we're not talking about those who worked on the road gangs and other things, but we're talking about those convicts assisting as clerks and other roles in the administration. Darling wanted this to change and he, he wanted free men or free men to replace the convicts in these roles. The Legislative Council acted and 500 convicts were taken from Port Macquarie and given to the settlers. Now around that same time the Reverend Scott mentioned to Darling about the education of convict children. At that time the colony had shades of Fagan in Oliver Twist where the convict parents would instruct the children in crime and petty theft. Great for the future of Sydney. This was only going to make a future generation of thieves to populate the young colony. There were no schoolmasters to teach the convict children. So plans were made to change this, which was great. Darling issued instructions to give those settlers in the far reaches of New South Wales priority in selecting convicts to work for them. This was to get them away from Sydney and its attractive vices. At the same time, he cracked down on convict crime in the town. Now, by July 1828, there were only a few convict clerks working in the government service, and by 1830, there were hardly any. Now, the other big item of Darling's tenure was the purchase and ownership of land in both quantity and quality. It had been an issue in the colony from the early days. John MacArthur and others saw the opportunity and grasped it. But there were many others who had more modest dreams and wanted security and tenure of land. The good land was owned by 29 people of the colony and they were the usual suspects who were closely allied to the Executive Council, MacArthur, Campbell and others. By 1831 this was getting to breaking point and in order to develop the huge expanses of land there needed to be an increase in immigration of British labourers. And at this point we'll talk about the immigration in another section, but it was proposed to buy or sell land only at public auction at a minimum price of five shillings an acre. It was also proposed to suspend the grants of land which had been around since the start of the colony. In July 1831 this was promulgated and by September most of the big landowners were not happy about this. And this raises an interesting story. In October 1831, William Charles Wentworth met James MacArthur, the son of John MacArthur, in the streets of Sydney. And even though their views, their animosities and feelings toward each other were as separate as the North and South Poles, they did agree that this new Land Act was going to affect them. But by this stage, Darling had been recalled and so the Act remained, timing again. Both MacArthur and Wentworth agreed to form a committee to present a petition to the King to change this regulation, obviously in their favour. And because it was difficult to get rents from the new regulations, well, this was a main complaint. So Governor Daly did make some changes to the colony, some controversial and some needed. Towards the end of his tenure, there was an investigation into his management of the colony and he was held to be without fault. He was awarded the Knight Grand Cross in 1836 when he had returned to England. So, 
There we have a snapshot of some of the achievements of the Governor and Captain General of New South Wales, Ralph Darling. I'm Michael Bishel. In the future, we'll have more videos on other aspects and people of this interesting part of 19th century Sydney. See you later.